The Shanghai Motor Show has been and gone, but there were five cars that really stood out to me as being pretty awesome in different ways. Now, all five of them are real cars. They're not concepts. They're cars that you either can buy now or you will be able to buy very soon. Now, I'm not talking about everyone in the world, by the way. Some countries, some places, depends on the model. Let's have a look at these five cars. Let me know which ones you think are actually good or worth buying. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. I think there's been about eight and a half thousand new subscribers over the last few weeks. Awesome to see all of you. Awesome to see everyone else back again as well. Let's get straight into it. Number one is the Geely Panda Mini. Now the Panda Mini costs 7,800. You can get a cheaper version, but this is the special limited edition. And I think the Panda Mini just looks cool. The limited edition duck face one, nah, not really my thing. Some people might love it, but the Panda Mini is an electric car that I can see being sold worldwide because Geely, they're planning a global electric car offensive with their brands Zika, Polestar, and Volvo, and potentially some other brands as well. It's pretty easy for Geely to start selling cars like these outside of China, which they plan on doing so. Now, the Geely Panda Mini Little Yellow Duck Limited Edition was officially launched at the 2023 Shanghai Auto Show. It starts at $7,800 US dollars. You can pay an extra $400 dollars to get a, a special model with some extra stuff. The Panda Mini is Geely's first mini electric car. The price of the standard version is 5,800 US dollars. But if you want this special version with the duck face and the yellow wheels, then you can pay more and get the special version. How much power does it have? Well, first of all, it has two LFP battery options. The more expensive option has a 17 kilowatt hour battery. The cheaper option has a 9.6 kilowatt hour battery. And the car is said to have an efficiency of 96.5%. Top speed is 100 kilometers an hour. And the cheaper model has a 20 kilowatt, it's about 30 horsepower and 85 newton meter single electric motor. Now the more expensive version, which would be the one that I'd be looking at, not the duck one, by the way, just the normal model, has 30 kilowatt and around 50 horsepower and 110 newton meters of torque. What about range? While range in the smaller pack option is 120 kilometers, get the bigger pack, 200 kilometers of range. I think that's perfect. Second car, right? First car, you wanna have like a family car for a lot of people or a bigger car if you wanna go on adventures and trips and put your bikes in the car. This would be the perfect second car. 200 kilometers of range, that to me seems pretty ideal for a car this size. So fast charging is 22 kilowatt. Doesn't sound very fast, but considering the battery is quite small, it only takes around 30 minutes to charge from 30% to 80%, 68 minutes for a full battery charge. How big is it? It's a slightly bigger car than the Wuling Hongwei Mini EV, which is made in a tri-venture between General Motors, Wuling, and SAIC. It's 3,065 millimeters long, 1,522 millimeters wide, meaning it can get through some of those narrow streets in Europe, and it's 1.6 meters tall, 1,600 millimeters. It's a real boxy EV. Uh, it looks odd, but odd in a cute way. I like it. I don't know why. It just appeals to me. But what in particular appeals to me about this stuff is not this new duck looking one that's been revealed. The standard Geely Mini is just an affordable electric car that I think it gives the masses the option, right, to either have a, a good electric second car or simply gives people that wouldn't otherwise be able to afford mobility an electric vehicle. It's not likely we're going to see most of the Chinese electric car brands sell these kinds of cars outside of China, but it is likely we're going to see companies like Geely do it because Geely, that's what they do. Second car in this list is the iCar 03. Cherry's new electric brand iCar, which is aimed at younger buyers, launched with the GT sports car and the 03 compact SUV concepts. Now this model will actually come with sodium iron batteries later on in the year. It's said to be the first electric car in the world mass manufactured with sodium batteries from CATL, but there are sodium and lithium hybrid battery, meaning could be a really revolutionary product. Now I made a video about that technology. I'll put a link in the description below to that video. The G3 is designed in the style of an angular off-roader. It looks a little bit like a Land Rover Defender, except it will be a lot cheaper. Cherry Cindy 03 will go into production later this year and is preparing for a European launch with a target date in 2024. How much does it cost? In China, it's 29,000 US dollars, range of 400 kilometers or 249 miles, and it will actually have solar panels. Now, 
I'm gonna guess that they're gonna make a more expensive, longer range version as well. But either way, this just seems like a ridiculously good bargain, even if it's not the greatest car you've ever driven. I mean, look at the size of it. Unbelievable, $29,000 for this car, which will actually come to Europe. And I'm guessing other countries. Now, Cherry have been confirmed for Australia as well. So Aussies, good chance we're gonna get this car. They know we want a car like this. We want an electric car like this, very highly liked. Then you've got the Neo ES6. It's called the EL6 in Europe. The reason being that Audi sued Neo, forcing them to not use the ES6 moniker in Europe. The CEO of premium electric brand Neo, William Lee, who is a bit of an eccentric wacko. I think he's even crazier than Elon Musk. But anyhow, unveiled the midsize ES6, the newest version of the brand's entry SUV. And people loved it. The crowd went crazy. Maybe it was some imported Neo fans. I don't know. But either way, you got to admit, it is a pretty nice looking car. The car will use Neo's 675 kilowatt hour battery in the base model. It'll also get a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack that can be swapped out in five minutes or less using the company's power swap battery swap stations they have them in china they have them in europe you can just drive in it's like a gas station service station you can drive in and i'll swap the battery out for you in around it's around three to four minutes and you've got a new charged battery pack that's neo's model will that succeed long term i don't think so but anyway it doesn't matter that's pretty cool that they offer that feature this car is coming to europe it's on sale now in china it's coming to europe like i said this year the BYD song l there is a song version of this car that is plug-in hybrid. This is not the plug-in hybrid version. This is the fully electric version. This is actually one of the best-selling electric cars in the world already. However, this is the coupe version, which you have to admit looks incredibly attractive, aggressive. And why is that? Well, the designer who now designs cars for BYD is known as Wolfgang Egger. He was the former designer at Audi, Alfa Romeo, and Lancia doing his, during his career, meaning he knows what he's doing. This EV is going to come out within the next few months in China. Will it be produced for European markets? I'm not too sure, but seeing as BYD are now selling about six different electric cars in multiple countries all around the world, good chance we're going to see this as well. The Song L is part of NEO's upmarket dynasty range. It will come with a lithium iron phosphate blade battery with around 700 kilometers of range. Definitely an interesting competitor to something like a Tesla Model Y, probably a little bit more pricier than the Model Y considering the price reductions we've seen for the Model Y. Either way though, it's a damn good looking car. I'm a big fan. The Aeon Hyper GT was also unveiled. The GAC owned Aeon EV brand, a big, big seller in China. In fact, the third biggest electric car manufacturer in China this year, unveiled the Hyper GT last year. It has scissor opening doors. I'm not a big fan of those personally. What do you think? Would you get a car with scissor opening doors like the Model X? I don't know. However, despite its name, the Hyper GT is a conventional sedan. The entry 560 model has 348 miles of range or around 560 kilometers and it costs 29,000 euros which is 31,800 US dollars it costs around the same price as a Tesla Model 3 in China it has three battery pack options the small battery is 60 kilowatt hours and the top spec model is said to have 710 kilometers of range the mid spec comes with a 70 kilowatt hour battery pack which is swappable so it's using CATL's new swappable battery technology by the way CATL they're the biggest battery company in the world and they're supporting swappable batteries as a contender of sorts to Neo. Now there's one other car that I saw that I loved. It comes in two variants. It's called the Nita GT Speedster and the Nita GT. The Speedster version is what Nita are using to call the convertible version of this car. It's the cheapest electric convertible, full-sized electric convertible in the world. There is a cheaper electric convertible, it's, but it's a mini car. It's the Wuling Hongwa Mini EV. It costs 14,000 US dollars. You've got to enter a lottery to get it because there's so many pre-orders that they can't make enough for the next five years. So it's a lottery car. This car, well, maybe the same thing will happen. I mean, $26,000 for an electric sports car with this kind of performance is truly staggering. The convertible version costs a little bit more at $27,000. If you want a version with two motors and nearly 600 horsepower, you're looking at 32,500 US dollars. I made a video about this car. You need to see that video just to see how amazing this car is for the money. It's one of my favorite cars this year because it's going to bring affordable, electric, exciting sports cars to the masses. Anyhow, let me know which of these you like or don't like, or let me know if there was another car you saw at the motor show that you thought was even better. Thanks for watching, my friends. Bye bye.